Hello, it's Kate Stillman, and welcome to Allergy Relief. This workshop is to help you uproot your allergies. Now, the first thing I really want to get into is you and, and what kind of allergies that you actually have. And so we're going we're gonna to really get into the different body types. We're going to get into what's going on in your lymph system. We're going to get into the cross combinations of things. We're going to get into solutions. We're going to like get into key habits that anyone can have that will really reduce their allergies or their immune response. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I have these bodies so that I can, so that I can draw on them is the different types of allergies. So some people have allergies in their skin, right? So there's a, there's a reactivity that happens in their skin and their skin might um, be reactive. Even if you look at things like poison ivy or um, you get a bug bite and your skin gets really hyper inflamed, uh, I would include this in, in, in an um, aggravated immune response. Uh, other people have allergies that are much more in their, uh, it just seems like their waterways. So like their lungs, those are lungs are producing mucus and the mucus is coming out of their sinuses. So, so anything that there's like sinuses, there's a runny nose, even post nasal drip, um, there's congestion in general. We can have this as a, as a group of allergies and, uh, with the skin, I forgot back here. If I go back, um, itchy eyes would be part of this where, and I'm just going to make red around the eyes, uh, itchy eyes is kind of like itchy skin. It's just like your eyeballs are itchy. So I'm going to include that over there. Now there's a, a third, uh, this a third major grouping, if you will, of allergies, and that's in the digestive tract. So, um, you eat food, it goes into your stomach and then it goes through your intestines and out. So people that have food allergies where you eat something and, um, it creates, um, a response in your body that you cannot digest the food. So we have like these three major ways. We've got like this, we've got the skin. Sometimes this is called ap atopy. Um, we have congestion. This is often like the rhinitis type. And then we have the, the food allergies, which can take on a lot of different reactions. There can be gas, there can be bloating, there can be anaphylactic shock, etc. So what I'd like you to do as I'm teaching in this workshop is we have these blank charts that are part of your handouts and they, they look like this. <laughs> and there's, um, what I'd like you to do is go right along with me so that you're drawing out exactly what your symptoms are. So if you have allergies that that and just draw it right on the part of the body that is the most is the most aggravated right so if you have if you have itchy eyes you would just do you would make a sign like that if you have a runny nose i'm not a great artist here i'm also not very uh i don't have good handwriting but i'm working on it if you have a runny nose if you have like an itchy throat if that's what you get is like an itchy throat uh, if you have congestion, these are lungs, so congested lungs, you're just going to start drawing on your board. Um, if you also have itchy skin, and I really recommend using colors for this because you might be like, oh, it itches on my forearms and my, uh, and my calves, that itchy skin and exactly where it's happening. Some people get itchy back and you'll just take a moment and write down on, and it, you know, the reason I want you to do it on a body as opposed to just like making notes is because it just helps you start to see, see what it is, like exactly what is going on. Um, say you don't have uh, like thick snot, say you have thin snot and say it feels like post nasal drip, you would write post nasal drip. And so what you're just trying to get a sense of like, how is your how is your body responding? Uh, for me, when I had allergies growing up, I had a few different things happening. I had itchy eyes. I had a ton of congestion. So I would have like copious mucus. So I might write, describe your mucus if you have it. Copious mucus. Some people have it. It's thin. Other people, it's thick. Mine was quite, it was usually thick. Sometimes it was thin. 
you're just getting a good sense of you and what are your allergies. Or if you're taking this workshop because you're trying to help a child or a partner or a friend or, or whatnot, and you're, or you're a practitioner and you're trying to understand allergies, uh, drawing it out on a body, drawing out exactly what the symptoms are on a body, it helps a lot. It helps you start to understand exactly what it is and, and what is going on. So next what I'm going to talk a little bit is about how these symptoms relate to the different elements. So what we're going to look at is the descriptors of what you put down. Like how does that relate to these three elements? So we have fire and water and wind. Um, and these, these are actually forces of nature. We have the force of wind and the force of wind does a few things. It moves things it creates a sensitivity in the body. It's very related to the nervous system. Just like the nervous system moves impulses. All right, the fire as a force of nature, it's the energy of metabolism. So it digests things, metabolism. And it digests things. And water as a force, it's the force of cohesion. And it nourishes, it uh, it really allows repair and rejuvenation, and it causes things to come together. So this is the force of, of cohesion, and fire, so cohesion brings molecules together. Wind actually has the energy of dispersion, and you might be wondering what this has to do with your allergies, but you have to understand a certain level of how energies work in your body to understand what's going on. And this, I'm just laying a foundation for us to much better understand you and your allergies. So we have the force of cohesion. So anyone who has like thick, sticky mucus, there's more cohesion. Anyone who has like post nasal drip type allergies, um, that would be the force of dispersion or more of the wind. And metabolism, it digests and it uses heat. And heat, we all know, rises. Um, and it intensifies. So there's these three different ways that energy moves in the body. And all of these have attributes. And the better we understand the attributes, the more we can understand what's the nature of your allergies. So if you have allergies that are more caused by wind, you'll have an underlying dryness. Uh, they might come and go. There might be an irregularity. You might notice it's really aggravated by uh, by stress. You might notice that th there's constipation involved, that you tend more towards constipation or alternating constipation and loose stool, which would reflect that, that irregularity. For people that have more heat or fire related allergies, there's going to be more inflammation. There's going to be more redness. There's going to be more intensity like the allergies might come on and it's just like super intense for a short period of time or it could feel super intense for a longer period of time. Um, there's usually an itchiness that's caused by the inflammation um, and there's a warmth to it. Like you feel like you're on literally on fire. For people who have more water element or water as a force in their allergies, there's going to be more cohesion and it's sticky. Like your mucus feels really sticky and um, and gooky, <laughs> if you will, that gooky feeling. So people that have, uh, you know, just impacted sinuses, which can turn into a sinus infection, um, where it just feels like there's just impacted congestion. There's an element of congestion that's almost always in cough uh, type allergies or water type allergies. There's uh, sometimes just a lot of mucus that comes up from the stomach. And you might like feel like you're launching loogies. That's what we used to call them growing up, where you're like hucking like loogies, like, <clears throat> like trying to get this like gunk up and out from your stomach lining up and out through your throat, through your mouth, where you spit it out. And then the nature of that stuff that you're spitting out is sticky. It's congested. So now just go back here and just get a sense of like, where is there wind? Where is there fire? And where is there water in here? So for instance, this itchiness here, I might write fire. That this is more by fire. This thick copious mucus, this would be water element here. Uh, if I had postnasal drip, because it's thin and it's dry, this might this is actually a reactive type mucus. 
there's an underlying dryness. So you might feel like you get post-nasal drip, but there's an underlying dryness in your throat that often goes together. This kind of mucus is very thin, whereas over here, this mucus is very thick. Um, in the middle, fire type mucus is actually usually yellow or green. There's a color to it. So just post-nasal drip here, I would say, um, I'd say, I would say this is the force of wind or I was writing air because sometimes it's called air, wind. All right. So now we have a sense of, of what's going on uh, in terms of just what are like the most basic things that are happening in terms of, of allergies for you. Okay, now I just want to explain a little bit about the, about the body and about what's going on with allergies in general and immune system. So in Ayurveda, we look at that there's these, these, these levels of tissue in the body. And when we look at allergies in general, they're affecting the first level of tissue in the body. And by level, I mean that there's numbered. So there's seven layers of tissue that go from... Uh, in increasing simplicity to increasing complexity. And that's good news because allergies are actually happening at a very, at a, at a very simple, basic foundational level of tissue, which means they're ac it's actually much easier to impact than something that's happening at the level of, of bone tissue. So the levels of tissue in Ayurveda are, are the first level is the lymph system. The second level is red blood cells. Third level is muscle tissue, then fat tissue, then bone tissue, then bone marrow tissue, then reproductive fluid, uh, and then the cream of the crop, but all that is a robust immune system. So this first level of tissue is rasa in Ayurveda. So this is a word that comes from Sanskrit, and it means taste. And what we're, what we're talking about is this first level of tissue from the body that is the fluid system. So in, in Western science, we have different words for that. Uh, we have words like plasma, which is the fluidity of, of the blood. Um, that's not the red blood cells. It's not the white blood cells. It's that majority of liquid of the blood that isn't those more complex cells. We're also talking about the interstitial fluid, which is the fluid that's between cells in, in deeper tissue layers. And then we're also talking about the lymph. Uh, that which that would when when blood moves out of the artery uh, due to due to pressure due to blood pressure right and, and here's the cells that are getting oxygenated so oxygen is is coming in to the cells because the artery is carrying oxygenated blood uh, after after that the fluid here this is the interstitial fluid that's this part between the cells right plasma is the part in the artery. Then it gets moved to, again to, um, due to pressure in the blood as CO2, as these cells become, as they release CO2, that fluid moves, that fluid now moves into the vein and now it's called lymph. And then the lymph nodes are where lymphatic vessels collect and this filters and this has uh, immune cells and then moves back into the vein. And so there's more of that lymphatic fluid as well. All right, so that's just so we understand that this level of tissue in Ayurveda, if, we, if we're saying that, hey, there's stuff, there's these elements, if you will, there's excess dryness or there's excess heat or there's excess stickiness uh, in the rasa, these are qualities and we're gonna look at why, like what is happening that's creating this why that's creating these symptoms, then we'll have a much better understanding of how to do the opposite. Ayurveda has a very simple lesson and that's like increases like and the opposites reduce each other. Fire allergies, if you keep aggravating yourself with, with uh, things that increase fire as a force in the body, things that are heat inducing, things that are sharp, that are inflammatory, that are intense, you, will, you should expect more symptoms like that. If you um, increase the force of cohesion by eating foods that are sticky, by not getting enough exercise, by being quite sedentary, then you can expect some of these, these water-related symptoms of the body. Uh, and the same thing is true in terms of wind. If you have uh, excess dryness in, in the body, then and you do things that are increasingly drying to the body, like eat dry, crunchy foods, or live in a regular lifestyle, or 
bedtimes are regular and eating times are irregular and you have a lot of stress, you can expect to aggravate um, the things that are creating the Vata type or the wind type of allergies. So that's it for this, this video. Is It's just a little bit of an introduction. Hopefully you have a sense of, of what exactly what your symptoms are. That's the easiest thing to get a sense of. And what basic forces, the force of wind, the force of fire, or the force of water that uh, is, is in the root cause. All right, we'll be back to go more into exactly what's going on with these imbalances and how to start to ameliorate them.